Welcome, I'm Adina Wancha and I guide high achieving men and women create extraordinary lives and loving ecstatic relationships. The intention of this podcast is to empower both men and women when it comes to life, dating, relationships, and intimacy. I believe that by both men and women being healthy, powerful, and loving, we can be in thriving romantic partnerships and create a better world together. If this is something you resonate with, then please keep listening. In this episode, we are talking about how to prepare yourself for becoming a mother as a high-achieving woman. My definition of a high-achieving woman is a woman who is very focused on her career and she either has a demanding job or her own business. She is driven to achieve societal success, make money, and make a positive impact in the world. I would like to preface this by saying that I am not a mother and I don't have children. However, the ideas I'm going to share with you in this episode are, I believe, common sense things and they will make sense to you if you want to be a mother who also raises their children, not just give birth to them and have someone else raise them. So while I understand why in some cases women can't be with their babies as much as the babies need, I believe that if we are to bring new life into this world, it's our responsibility to create a safe and nurturing home for the babies. And if you don't have children yet, the five ways in which you can prepare yourself for motherhood, which I will share in this episode, will help you set your life in a way in which you spend more time with your children and give them the physical presence and the emotional connection they need to become healthy, loving, and productive adults. And this doesn't mean that you will be perfect and that you will make no mistakes because that will be impossible. You will make mistakes. However, what matters is that you will have good intentions and you will do your best for your future child or children. And this is not to say that the women who become single mothers are not good mothers. Life is not easy and I'm sure that most of these women are doing their best for their children and they love them very much. However, if you don't have children yet, I would strongly advise you not to make babies outside of marriage or with a man who doesn't want to commit or he's in any way abusive towards you. Being a single mother is very challenging and if you don't believe me, speak to some single mothers. Most of them want to be home with their children, but they have to work because they don't have a good man who can support them. If you feel your clock is ticking, it's better to invest in your healing and evolution so you choose a good man, not a selfish narcissist who will dump you, abuse you, or not take good care of you and the children. I decided to make this episode after talking to a friend who is married and who wants to become a mother sooner rather than later, considering she is in her mid-30s, and she's also driven towards achieving some financial goals and having a successful career. And more and more women nowadays are either postponing becoming mothers because their career comes first, or are struggling once they become mothers because it's very hard to have a successful career and be a present mom at the same time. And this makes a lot of sense. We all have a limited amount of time and energy in a day, and being a mother is a 24 hours job, especially in the first year, but also in the following two, three years. So I'm going to share with you what I told her, and although we don't know each other, I hope you understand that even though the things I'm going to share with you are a little bit tough and go against what society says, I am telling them to you because I want you and your future baby or babies to be healthy, happy, and to thrive. In the last 70 years, society has brainwashed women to think they are men. While we can be as capable and as successful as men, we are not men. And if you don't believe me, take a look at your body. You have something that a man doesn't have, and that is a womb. Our capacity as women to give birth 
makes us very distinct from men. We are the ones who can bring new life into this world, and we are the ones who decide what DNA goes into the future. We are the keepers of the DNA and of life. And this is a big responsibility. That is why I believe that as women, we shouldn't have children with any man out there and that a man should earn his right to have children and his genes to go into the future. It saddens me to see women who make babies with men who are evil or mentally disturbed and who harm them and their children or men who are just incapable of surviving. These are the men who don't have a good stable income, who don't protect and provide for their families, who have crippling addictions, who aren't kind and loving to their families. I don't know if you notice, but life on this planet isn't necessarily easy. You need to be smart, capable, hardworking, and fierce to survive. Not everybody makes it on this planet. So if you want your future, ch future child or children to have the best chances at a good life, I strongly advise you to be fierce when dating. Don't tolerate abuse, disrespect, or wishy-washy behaviors. Have high standards for yourself and then for the man that you will allow into your life. Remember, you are the one who decides the future of this planet by choosing the man you'll have babies with. So what kind of world do you want to create? One that is full of narcissists or one that is full of kind and capable people? And this brings us to the first way to prepare for motherhood that I want to share with you, which is marry a healthy masculine man who can financially support you and the baby and who is also a good person. So if you are single, date with intention. The most important reason why I'm advising you to choose a man who is more in his healthy masculine energy, meaning that he is driven, ambitious, focused on his career and on making money, he wants to take care of his family, a man who displays kindness, compassion and respect during dating, is because choosing a man like this will create a safe home for you and the baby and he will take care of you and make your life easier. On the other hand, if you make babies with a man who doesn't have a stable income, who can hardly support himself, and maybe who has even some addictions, who is self-centered and selfish, you will suffer and so will the future child or children. If you are in your late 20s, 30s or 40s and you desire a family, stop dating men who are children in adult bodies and who don't have a good stable income, don't have a car, don't have a home or a plan for buying one, men who only want to have fun with you, men who are aggressive towards you, men who have previous marriages and they haven't learned anything from them, men who don't take care of their children from their previous relationships. If he doesn't take care of those children, what makes you think he will take care of yours? Men who cheat, men who have addictions. You cannot change anyone. So before you choose a man with a bad behavior, ask yourself if you can tolerate it for the rest of your life because people change only when they want to. Also pay attention to men who want to control you, men who can't admit when they are wrong or they made a mistake, men who blame you for everything that goes wrong. As a high achieving woman, you have your own income and you can take care of the expenses. But why would you want to do this when this is a man's job? If you don't take anything else from this episode, here is what I want you to take. Making money and taking care of his loved ones in various ways is what makes the difference between a man and a boy. And of course that making money isn't the only skill that a man should have. And he should also display qualities as kindness, being loving, smart, generous, responsible, disciplined, faithful, etc. in order to be a good husband and father. Manhood is something that is gained through a man's capacity to provide 
protect and cherish his family. If you are to think about it, men were the ones who would go hunting to feed the tribes, not women. Can we also use our masculine energy to hunt, which nowadays translates into working to make money? Sure, but being too much in our masculine energy is not healthy for us women. This is why ideally we can be, be less in our masculine energy and be more in our feminine energy. Why? Because we were created with different purposes. The universe created women to be the ones who can create new life and created men to be the ones who protect and provide for this new life. This is not to say that if a woman doesn't make babies, she is worthless. Having children is a personal choice. Every man or woman on this planet can use their creative energy to bring value into this world in other ways, not necessarily by making babies. As a woman, I don't have children, but I still use my creative energy, for example, for making this podcast. However, as women, the most important thing that distinguishes us from men is our capacity to make babies, because no man on this planet can do this. Now, as a high-achieving woman, you might be more in your masculine energy because to make money and be successful in society, you need to play by the rules created by men. And men thrive in their masculine energy. However, as women, being too much in our masculine energy makes us physically sick, mentally exhausted, emotionally unfulfilled, and spiritually disconnected. We are not created to be in our masculine energy as much as we are today. This doesn't mean that we cannot make money and be successful if we are in our feminine energy. Quite on the contrary. By being more in your feminine energy and using your masculine energy on purpose, you can create a much better life than being mostly in your masculine energy. And I speak from my own experience. In the past three or four years of my life, I've started being more in my feminine energy and I'm happier and more fulfilled than ever. This doesn't mean that I, that I don't use my masculine energy, because I do. However, I don't overuse it anymore because that brought me to a severe bar burnout a few years ago. If this is you and you desire to be a mother and make one or more babies, then you need to become aware that for achieving goals, you need to be more in your masculine energy, while for being a good mother, you need to be more in your feminine energy. And I am saying this so you become aware that career and motherhood are two very different roles and they require different skills. If you are great at achieving, I am sure you spent years developing the skills that allow you to get what you want. Similarly, if you want to be a good mother, you need to have different skills than the ones that make you successful in the outside world. And I am saying this so you start consciously preparing yourself for this new role and develop these new skills. Making a baby is a job that no man out there can do. Also, don't think that because women make babies all the time, getting pregnant, being pregnant, giving birth, breastfeeding the child, waking up multiple times per night will be easier. Because it isn't. It can be pretty exhausting. That is why I encourage you to commit to a kind man who can take care of you in very pragmatic ways, although you have your own income, from your job or your business. And I am saying this because although some countries provide paid maternity leave for one or two years, in other countries, the woman needs to go back to work after a few weeks or months. How could this be good for the child? A baby needs his mother's presence for at least the first three to five years. So if you find yourself in a country that doesn't provide maternity leave, or if you want to stay home with your children until they go to the kindergarten or to school, then date with intention and make sure to marry a man who can and wants to financially support his family. 
So ladies, irrespective of how much money you make or how successful you are in your careers, if you want to become a mother, then please choose a kind man who can and wants to protect and provide the basic necessities such as shelter, food, transportation, clothes, education, and medical services for his family. You can always use your income to upgrade your life experience, but allow him to take care of the basic stuff. Use your time and energy to be home with your baby because your baby needs you more than anything else. And this brings us to the second idea I want to share with you, which is decide what's your priority for the next three to five years, the baby or their career, because you cannot focus on both at the same time. As women, we can have it all, but we cannot get it all at the same time. If you want a successful career and a baby at the same time, you will struggle and so will the baby. Why? Simply because you don't have the time and the energy you would need to be successful at both at the same time. Society has created this illusion that women can work 8 to 10 hours every day and also be available for their children how the children need. I'm sorry, but this isn't possible in the first 3 to 5 years of the life of the baby. Why? Simply because babies and toddlers depend fully on their caregivers in the first years of life. They need to be fed, washed, hugged, walked, entertained, kept safe, etc. So your baby needs you to survive and to thrive. And here is why the first three to five years are crucial. In the first three to five years, a person's foundation is created. Recent scientific research has shown that the connections needed for many important and high-level abilities, such as motivation, self-regulation, problem-solving, communication, and self-esteem, are formed in these early years. Also, children's brains develop connection faster in the first five years than in any other time in their lives. This is the time when the foundations for learning health, and behavior throughout the life are laid down. Babies are born ready to learn and their brains develop through use. During the first year of a child's life, the baby's brain will double in size. Much of this growth occurs in a part of the brain called the cerebellum, which is in charge of physical development and motor skills. This development helps babies learn to control their bodies and movement. Also, in the first year of life, the brain grows really fast, faster than any other time in our life. And the brain makes more than 1 million new connections every second. So to put it in a nutshell, the first 3 to 5 years in a baby's life will determine how good or bad the baby's life will be as an adult. We've all heard of childhood trauma, maybe even experienced it. But trauma is not only doing something harmful to a child, it's also lack of physical presence and emotional connection. And the way society is structured in many countries is for the women to behave exactly as men, and even though they gave birth and their baby needs them, they need to go back to work in a few weeks or months. From my perspective, this is inhumane and is one of the root causes of the dysfunctions we see in our society today. How can we expect babies who haven't been properly loved and taken care of to become high-functioning adults? If a lion, which is one of the most powerful creatures on this planet, can tear apart a human being in a few seconds, if a lion needs their mother for two years in order to become a healthy adult, what makes you think that your baby won't need you? And the great book which goes deep into the theme of being the mother your child needs, which I highly recommend for you to read, is called Being There by Erika Komisar. She's a clinical therapist who has worked with thousands of people who lack their mother's presence and love 
and she speaks about what she learned from her patients in her book. And her main message is that a mother's emotional and physical presence in her child's life, especially during the first three years, gives the child a greater chance of growing up emotionally healthy, happy, secure, and resilient. Again, the name of the book is Being There by Erika Commissar. Point number three in how to prepare yourself for motherhood is heal your biggest traumas. One of the most amazing gifts you can give to your baby, which compares to no other toy or high-end daycare, is you being physically, mentally, and emotionally healthy. Most people on this planet have suffered some sort of emotional traumas in their childhood or adult lives. What emotional trauma basically means is an overwhelming emotional response to an event which you don't know how or don't have the capacity to process at that time. So that emotion that you feel then, for example, fear, disgust, anger, etc., gets stuck in the body. And anything on this world can be traumatic. What decides if something produces trauma in a person is that person's nervous system and their capacity to process emotions. Most traumas come from our childhood when we don't really have the capacity to process emotions unless our mother has taught us how to do that. Yes, as a mother, you are the one who can support your child to understand how they feel and show them how to allow that emotion to run through their body. But you won't be able to do that if you are working instead of being with your baby. And there are two types of traumas that are passed down through the womb. Transgenerational trauma, which means that people in the next generation find themselves showing the symptoms of a trauma without having experienced the trauma themselves. For example, your great-grandmother has suffered a trauma and you are now suffering the effects of that trauma, although it happened in another generation. And the second type is intergenerational trauma, which includes traumas that get passed down directly from one generation to another. From example, from your mother to you or from you to your children. As women, we are the ones who carry the babies in our wombs. And if we still carry our own trauma or the trauma of our female ancestors, then we are passing down this trauma to our babies. The traumas change the genes. Say, so if you had a traumatic event which you haven't healed, then you'll pass down that modified gene to your baby. Fortunately, we can decide which genes we want activated and which ones we want deactivated. This is something that is studied by the science named epigenetics, which investigates how our environment influences our genes, altering not our DNA sequence, but how it's read and utilized. Consider your life as a book. Your DNA is the unchanging alphabet. But the story, which is shaped by your experiences, is fluid. Significant trauma can cause dramatic plot twists that don't change the alphabet, but can change how you express yourself and what kind of story you create. A happy and loving one or a story filled with disease, stress, lack, suffering, etc.? So take an objective look at yourself and answer this question. Which of your behaviors would you like to pass down to your children and which you don't want to pass down? And I am asking you this because most of our self-destructive behaviors come from an unhealed trauma. I highly recommend that before you start working on making this baby, Get some therapy and or somatic coaching to deal with your own traumatic events first. And these traumatic events can be anything that has left a negative emotional imprint on you. For example, a childhood event, not getting the attention you needed from your parents, a toxic romantic relationship, 
and any abuse you suffered throughout your life. To uncover these, use these questions. What haven't you made peace with yet? When you think about your childhood, what events stand out? How do you feel about your childhood? What did you as a child needed and you never got? How do you feel in your body when you think of that? When you think about your previous romantic relationships, how do you feel? What previous romantic relationship stands out to you in a negative way? What has been the event that has produced the biggest suffering in your life? How do you feel now towards it? Of course that your child will be a unique individual and not your or their father's copy. However, transgenerational trauma and intergenerational trauma are real. If you want to give your children the best chances of living an amazing life, I strongly, strongly recommend you to heal your biggest traumas before you get pregnant. Otherwise, the risk of passing down your traumas to your child is very big. And if you don't believe me, you can do your own research on how generational trauma can impact your baby while they're in your womb. And for an example, I was listening to this woman who was born through surrogacy. So her parents paid a woman to give birth to, to carry her and give birth to her. And she was saying how she now has very similar mental struggles with the woman who carried her in her womb. And although she was raised by her parents in a good environment and the parents who raised her didn't have those struggles, she has the struggles of her, the woman that carried and gave birth to her. So take this very seriously. Point number four in how to prepare yourself for motherhood is learn about how to raise children from people who actually know what they're talking about. Not all parents know what they're doing. And I think you can see this when you are observing other people's children. A parent's biggest responsibility is to raise their children into healthy, functional, and productive adults. And to do this, you need to know how to educate your child. With so many parenting trends and advice out there, there is hard to discern which is the best way in which you can do your best to ensure your child becomes a sane adult. However, I can recommend you a good book, which is written by a journalist who researched various cultures to discover how our ancestors raised happy and helpful humans. The book is called Hunt, Gather, Parent. In Hunt, Gather, Parent, the, the author travels with her three-year-old daughter to learn and practice parenting strategies from families in three of the world's most venerable communities, Maya families in Mexico, Inuit families above the Arctic Circle, and Hadzabe families in Tanzania. She sees that these cultures don't have the same problems with children that Western parents do. Most strikingly, parents build a relationship with young children that is vastly different from the ones many Western parents develop. And these relationships are built with on cooperation instead of control, trust instead of fear, and personalized needs instead of standardized development milestone. Again, the name of the book is Hunt, Gather, Parent, and you can also find it in the audio version. As a parent, it's your job to discern if the information you're consuming and then applying in your parenting is actually helpful or it's causing more problems. I know there is this trend now with gentle parent parenting, which sounds good and has some of its principles are helpful, but it's not a style of parenting suitable for most children. And in many cases, it turns children into snowflakes or brats, not into helpful future adults. Again, your job as a parent is to do your best to turn a child into a healthy, functional and productive adult 
who can live a good life and create good into this world. For this, you need to take into consideration if your behavior with this child is making them stay a child or is helping them grow into a functional adult. Because as an adult, this child will have to work and make money, be in relationships, take care of their body, help other people, be a valuable member in the society, and not become an entitled, entitled narcissist who harms other people because they, that's what they were taught, or who destroyed themselves or other people because they didn't get the love they needed from their parents. The extremes of helicopter parents or military parents aren't healthy or useful. And the last point in how to prepare yourself for motherhood is set up your life in a way that you enjoy your pregnancy and your life with your newborn baby. If you chose a good man, you are prioritizing being a mother over your career for a few years. You've healed your most important traumas and you're educating yourself on how you can be the parent your child needs. Then you have a solid foundation for enjoying motherhood. The first years of your baby's life are precious and you won't want to miss them. If you don't believe me, speak with other mothers. What most of them will say is that there were challenging times, but being with their babies gave them so much joy and fulfillment that they wouldn't have missed it for the world. So start thinking of how you can plan your career or your business in a way that will allow you to enjoy pregnancy and the first three to five years of your baby's life. What changes do you need to make now so you have more time, energy, and presence for your future baby? What tasks can you delegate? What projects can you let go of? How can you arrange your business in a way that it will still make money although you are not on top of it anymore? Who can you hire or train to help you? Also, you need to become aware that being a career woman is very different from being a mother. In the first years of your baby's life, your life will be more about what the baby needs than your own goals, about what's best for the baby than what you want to do, about prioritizing your child and not your career. This doesn't mean that you don't take care of yourself. Actually, you need to take good care of yourself first if you want to be present and nurturing with your child. However, you cannot go full speed on your career and be a present mother at the same time because you just won't have the time and the energy to do so. This doesn't mean that you will let go of your job forever or of your business fully. It just means that you will prioritize being with your child instead of working and achieving for a few years. Any mother out there can tell you that having and raising a child will fulfill you in different ways than your career fulfills you. Spending the first three to five years more focused on the baby than on the career will be a sacrifice and also an investment. You are investing in your child's happiness, health, well-being, and success as an adult. The most important things that your baby needs are a healthy and happy mommy and daddy who create a safe, stable, and loving home for the baby to grow, learn, take risks, love and be loved, play, experiment, etc. So before you make a baby, make sure you are married to a healthy masculine man who can provide, protect, and cherish you. Prioritize being physically present and emotionally connected with your child instead of focusing on your career for a few years. Heal your traumas so you don't pass them down to your children. Read about how to raise children to become healthy and helpful adults from people who have studied evolution and understand human psychology and behavior on a deep level. And set up your life in a way that will allow you to enjoy motherhood. If you resonate with what I shared with you and you are committed to giving your future children a healthy and loving family, 
I'm inviting you into my one-to-one -one coaching container where we'll, we will work together on healing your past sufferings and on becoming the reciprocal of a kind and healthy masculine man who can also be a good father so you create the family and the life you desire. You can find the details in the description box below. Thank you for listening to this episode. I appreciate your time and energy. If you found this episode helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I hope to meet you again in my next episode. Until then, keep evolving, loving, and creating. Bye!